right, now we're talking about solving systems using elimination. So systems of linear equations, and we're going to find an even uh, newer process for solving them. And uh, in some situations, this will probably be the quickest one. Uh, so you might like it. Name, date, and title, and let's uh, get after it. But per usual, I want to start with a little description or explanation, which will show you the fact that what we're about to do, the types of steps we're about to take, moves we're about to make with these equations are completely valid and they make a lot of sense. So I want you to develop a rationality for them. So here I just have written uh, two equations, fairly basic, but just f equals 5 and g equals 3. Now I want to drive home the point that with equations we're allowed to kind of change them however we want as long as we change them in the same way on both sides. So I'm allowed to double this. If g is equal to 3, then 2g should be equal to 2 times 3. And uh, g plus 7 should be equal to 3 plus 7, and so on and so forth. And so the idea here is that we're allowed to add, we're allowed to multiply, we're allowed to divide both sides of an equation as long as we do the same thing to both sides. But the other thing that we're allowed to do is we're allowed to say that if I know that f equals 5 and I know that g equals 3, not only could I add 3 to both sides and it would be equivalent, not only could I add g to both sides and it would be equivalent, but I can add g to one side and I can add 3 to the other. And that's if we've already established that g is equal to 3. So we're doing the same thing to both sides, it just looks a little bit different. And we're going to see that this makes sense. If f plus g now is on the left and 5 plus 3 is on the right, we should get f plus g is equal to 8. Now, is that true? Well, f is 5 and g is 3, so it's 5 plus 3 is f plus g, it's 8. This should make sense. It seems kind of maybe like a waste of time that I'm just explaining this, but uh, it's kind of the basis for what we do with elimination. So I want to make sure we actually looked at it for a second. The notes we need to know are that we can alter equations in many ways so long as we change both sides in the exact same way. Um, so if you're going to divide the left-hand side by 4, you have to divide the entire right-hand side by 4. And that's the most common mistake I see is people will just divide one term, but we need to divide the entire right side. Another thing is if we're going to square the left-hand side or use an exponent, then we have to do the same to the entire right side all at once, the entire right side as a binomial or trinomial, if that's what it might be. Next, although x and y values for different equations vary, the x and y values for two equations are the same at their intersection or solution. So we're allowed to treat y's as equal to y's and x's as equal to x's, so long as we're talking about the intersection of two different equations. Um, and this is something that keeps showing up when we're talking about solutions to systems, is because we're really we're interchanging, we're using this equivalence for different variables, and it makes sense only because we're talking about the intersection. So x and y pairs are not always the same for two different equations, um, but at the solution they are. Finally, we have another four-step process, which is really similar to our so substitution process, but it's um, just some minor changes. So our steps are first going to be to alter the equation so that we have matching coefficients for a variable. You're going to see what that looks like in the first problem. But the idea is we're going to try and get one of the variables to cancel out, so we need to make sure that uh, we can cancel out the same number of that x or that y. So we want matching coefficients. Again, coefficients are the number in front of the variable. Number two, we're going to combine the equations to cancel a variable. So we're going to add or subtract one equation with the other kind of like we just saw with that f plus g equals 5 plus 3. We're going to do something similar, and we're going to try and get those can coefficients to make one of the variables cancel out. Once one of the variables cancels out, we can solve for whatever variables left, and once we know uh, the x or y coordinate for the solution to the system, then we can plug in uh, that value to solve for the other coordinate to the solution. Okay, that's a lot of talk. Let's see what it looks like in, in practice. To solve a system using elimination, first we need to alter the equation so that we have mass matching coefficients for a variable. So in my first equation, I have 7 is my coefficient for x, and 6 is my coefficient for y. In the second, I have 4 as my coefficient for y, and 2 as my coefficient for x. Now, I don't have any matching coefficients, but I know I can alter these equations. So I am thinking that I'd like to get the y's to cancel in this case, and we could really do either way. But I'm going to alter these two. What, now I'm looking for a common multiple um, that 6 and 4 both go into, so I'm going to make these coefficients for y uh, be positive
positive and negative 12. So in this case, I need to multiply everything by 2. I need to multiply everything on the left by 2 and distribute it. So 2 times 7x would give me 14x. 2 times negative 6y would give me negative or minus 12y. And 2 times 45 is going to be 90. So I hope you see that we multiplied everything. We distributed and multiplied every single term by that 2. Down here to get this y to be um, to be 12, I'm going to need to multiply by 3. So we'll have 12y, positive 12y, is going to be equal to 6x minus 6 times 3 is 18. Uh, so 6x minus 18. And now, okay, what are we going to do at this point? Well, at this point, we want to combine these equations so that one of my variables cancels. And I have negative 12y and positive 12y. So if I add, and again, 12y is equal to 6x minus 18. So I'm really just adding the same value to both sides of that first equation. If I add this, then I'll just have 14x. And if I have negative 12y plus positive 12y, those cancel out. I have 14x is going to be equal to 6x. And I'm adding 90 and negative 18. So that would be a positive 72. Now we just have a one variable equation. Okay, I can solve for this remaining variable. I'll subtract 6x from both sides. And I'll get 8x is equal to 72. Divide both sides by 8. And we know that the x value of our, uh, of our solution or our intersection of these two lines is going to be at 9. Now, if they're going to cross when x is 9, well, what's y going to be? Well, it's going to be whatever y is when I plug in 9 for x in either equation. So 4y equals 2 times not x, but we know we're looking at x equals 9 minus 6. 4y equals 18 minus 6. 4y then equals 12. Divide both sides by 4. And we're going to get y equals 3. So where do these lines intersect? They intersect at 9, 3. So this may not be a may not be the perfect example of when substitution or when elimination makes sense. I think it works out fairly well in this case, but I want you to I wanted to include one where we had to alter both equations. So we had to see that, you know, there isn't a common coefficient and I can't just, you know, multiply by four by anything neatly to get six y's. So we actually need to find a common uh, common multiple, and that's what we did and it worked out pretty well. Um, at that point, we're just adding or subtracting the two equations. Again, it makes sense because if these are equal, then we're just adding the same value to either side, and the equivalence is maintained. So that's the whole rationality behind it. Let's look at a, a word problem that we need to use. So Anthony bought two mixtapes and five magazines and paid $43. Paul bought three magazines but sold two mixtapes and spent a total of $13. How much are the mixtapes selling for if they're all the same price? Okay, so Anthony bought two mixtapes and five magazines, so two times, in this case, let's use the variables that make most sense. Oh, I'm actually going to use X then for mixtapes, because mixtapes has an X, and magazines also starts with M, so that wouldn't make sense. So two mixtapes plus the cost of five magazines gave him a total bill of $43. All right, what about... Paul. Paul bought three magazines, so 3G, he spent three times the price of magazine, but then he sold two mixtapes, so we need to use minus. This is not adding to his bill, this is taking away from his bill. Two times X, and that gave him 13. Okay, well, this is a great example of a time when uh, elimination is going to make sense because we're already set up. We have coefficients that look good already. If I add this expression, um, this binomial to the left-hand side and 13 to the right-hand side, I'm adding the same value to both sides, so I maintain equivalence and it makes sense. But 2x and negative 2x are going to cancel when I add them, so let's add both sides. Or let's add this equation um, to both sides. So 2x and negative 2x cancel out. 5g plus 3g gives me 8g. Probably cell phone service coming out in 2024. 43 and 13 would be 56. That was such a bad joke. Divide both sides by 8. 
and we'll get g is equal to 7. Okay, well now that tells me what magazines are selling for. Magazines are $7, and I can just plug that value in. So if Anthony bought two mixtapes and five times the $7 magazines, and he spent $43, now that I've, again, figured out one of the variables, limited this down to being a one variable equation, I can solve for it pretty easily. So this will be 2x, two times the price of mixtapes, hopefully they're super fire, plus $35 equals 43. Okay, well the magazines cost 35, so what's left to be due to mixtapes? Be $8. And there were two of them, so each one mixtape divided by two, each mixtape was $4. They must not be fire at all. Okay. So the mixtapes are $4. And uh, this was, again, another example of how we can just try and find equations that are written in a word problem and then use our uh, system solving steps. In this case, elimination was the perfect, perfect route to take uh, to find the values of the different variables from a, from a word problem. So that's another example. Hopefully it made sense. Um, I'm going to leave you some practice problems on your own as always. The first one is pretty well set up for you. 4x minus 9y equals 27 and 2y minus 4x equals negative 35. Find the values of those two variables or find the intersection point. That would probably be the best way to describe it. And then 2 says write a system and then so you're going to have to figure out some equations and then solve using elimination. This says after working six hours and renting three movies last week, Rachel was able to save $57. After working 10 hours the week before and renting two movies that week, she was able to save 110 How much does she make each hour? So this is another one where you have to find out what are the variables um, that we don't know and how can you solve for them using elimination. Best of luck. You'll do 